Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Trading Outlook for the week of May the 18th, 2015. My name is Colin Sadzinski, Chief Market Strategist. Our topic for this week is, is the S&P rally done or just getting started? Over the uh, the last few months, we've seen the S&P and a number of other U.S. indices kind of trading sideways and looking pretty range-bound. Uh, here on Friday the 15th, we've seen the S&P peak to a new high, but then it slipped back, so it has us be wondering, is this a false breakout or is this a real breakout? So far, we haven't seen confirmation from the Dow or from the NASDAQ, and, and the S&P itself is faltering a little bit. So let's take a look at the... Uh, at the markets and and we'll get started so if we look here at the S&P we're seeing that it's basically been trading sideways since the beginning of February. We have uh, two things going on in the markets right now. We've had a, a bit of a cap put on the upside for U.S. indices on the feeling that at some point this year, the Fed could start raising interest rates. That removal of liquidity does create a headwind for stocks. At the same time, we've seen that corrections have only been able to knock the markets down so far because the U.S. economy has been steadily improving, which creates a, a positive uh, em environment for corporate earnings. So at the same time that the, the liquidity is providing some uh, headwinds, we have a tailwind from improving economy and corporate earnings. And that's kind of kept the uh, U.S. markets range bound. And we've seen this before. We saw this back in 2004 and 05. We saw this back in 1994 to 1995 when the, when the Fed was getting ready to start raising interest rates. Markets kind of leveled off and went sideways for about nine months to a year. So far, we're about three months in. So this would be a fairly short consolidation, although if we uh, if we took it back here to December, we're actually at about month five, so we could be midway through it, depending on how you uh, how you want to look at it. The RSI has been telling us upward momentum is slowing, but it hasn't been crashing either. We've just kind of gone from very positive to uh, to more neutral for uh, for U.S. momentum. So here today we had the S and P peak above 2120, touch 2125, and then slip back under 2120. So, uh, so far, this is looking like a failed breakout, first for the non-confirmation from other indices, and it hasn't been able to close. If it can close above 2120, particularly a daily, and more importantly, if we got a weekly close, that would be a signal of a breakout. But so far, we're not quite getting it, so it is looking as though we may have a false breakout in the S&P right now. What happened to knock it back was that we had a little bit of soft data out from the United States. The Empire Manufacturing, Industrial Production, and uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment all came in low. Because they've all come in below expectations, what this is telling us is that the uh, the possibility that um, even though the U.S. economy has rebounded out of the winter and we are seeing a seasonal improvement, it's not as much as people had hoped and it's not as strong as it was last year. So we are looking at a little bit of a moderating U.S. economy here. Uh, something else to think about that we're starting to see people talk about more, it's the development of an El Nino uh, weather pattern in the Pacific. This later in the year could cause some disruptions, particularly in terms of uh, bad weather in some regions, better re weather in others, a possibility of droughts in some areas. It could have an impact on the uh, the grains markets and, and agricultural air production in particular as the year progresses. So something else to be keeping an eye on there. We've seen quite a bit of disruptions uh, in the economy for the weather related in recent months, and this may continue throughout 2015. So at this point, it's looking as though the U.S. markets may still be near a top. But if we ever do get a breakout, there is some significant upside for the S&P at uh, 2120 or 2125 for the peak measuring back here to this uh, here, about 2075. That's about 50 points width. So measuring that to the upside suggests you could, if you did get a serious breakout, could see a run up towards the 2170, 2175 area. But for now, the S&P is looking as though it's uh, it's still struggling to uh, to break out, and we'll show the uh, the Dow now. Uh, similarly, as a as an example, it's still leveling off sideways. It has broken this uh, downtrend of uh, lower highs, but it's been contained here by the channel resistance at eighteen thousand three hundred. RSI is still pretty much pointing sideways, and on. Uh, client uh, sentiment, we're seeing that there's still some pretty substantial bearish positions uh, on the Dow, suggesting that people aren't really expecting them it, it to break out. Now, if it does break out, you could see a lot of people that are bearish on the on the, uh, 
the Dow or or the S&P or the Nasdaq really that uh, could if you did see some serious breakouts that a lot of people could get caught offside and have to scramble to get back on the bandwagon but at this point it doesn't quite look like it wants to break out and the failure here in fact could signal a uh, a double top for the Dow so got to be watching out for that too on the uh, Nasdaq we're uh, we're continuing to see a uh, trading level it actually has not uh, gotten back up to its previous high which was closer to 4550 it did peak above 4500 briefly but was knocked back so this one it's looking like this one isn't quite ready for prime time either uh, moving on from uh, from US indices I will uh, I will take a look quick look at some of the uh, the other indices around the world to show it's not just in the United States it is other areas that we are continuing to see uh, see markets struggle uh, for example if we look here at the DAX uh, it of course had a big run a big negative divergence on the RSI at the top signal upward momentum was slowing and now we're going into a downward staircase pattern uh, sell-off consolidation at lower level sell-off consolidation at lower level there's a double bottom here we'll see if that holds this supports 11180 if we break that there's a cluster of Fibonacci's in and around the 10 800 to 10 850 uh, area but with the RSI under 50 the momentum still appears to be pointing downward for the DAX uh, as well and uh, a brief peek here at the uh, at the FTSE shows us that despite the uh, the news that they did get a majority government in the UK despite the royal birth we just have not been able to see any kind of a breakout here for the uh, for the FTSE bit of a double top here just above 7100 as resistance it's dropped back under 7000 this first test here is around 6875 to 6900 if that fails then we could see a pullback here towards the uh, 6700 and we are seeing upward momentum steadily slowing and the RSI starting to drift back under 50 suggesting that momentum is starting to turn downward so it looks like we're uh, certainly for the US and Europe it looks like we're not out of the woods yet I'm just going to also show Hong Kong and uh, and Australia here Hong Kong had a, uh, a huge spike up here. This was on the uh, improved communications between the Hong Kong and Shanghai markets, so a big uh, revaluation upward. Since then, we've seen this market kind of stall out in the 27,000 to, to 28, this is 675 here, uh, say 27,000 to 28,000 range. Looks like it's leveling off here, RSI leveling off as well. And uh, if I just show the Australia 200, where we've also been seeing some weakness here, it had uh, had a big run up, quadruple top, and it broke that with a, a drop below 57.80. It's into a downtrend now, uh, um, and we're also seeing a downtrend in place on the RSI to signal an up swing for the uh, Australia 200. We'd have to see the index get back above this 57.80 Fibonacci level here. You'd want to see the RSI getting back above 50. Without that, we could drop back into this Fibonacci cluster here near 56.50, and the next Fibonacci test near 55.50 if the downtrend starts to resume. The uh, other significant thing I wanted to talk about this week was the uh, the U.S. dollar with, and uh, and commodity markets. With the U.S. dollar uh, starting to weaken again, we're uh, we're starting to see a rebound in commodities. The U.S. dollar index had outperformed its its peers for uh, for several months on anticipation that the Fed could start to raise interest rates. However, with the U.S. data coming in a bit on the soft side, it's looking as though Fed rate hikes could be put off until later in the year. Perhaps they might not start raising in June. Perhaps they start raising in September. We've got a bit of a double top here in the U.S. dollar, and we're starting to see it weaken back. It broke 94. It's holding 93.60 so far, it, or, and by 93.20. If this breaks, you could see it, uh, next support around 92.75 or even... Um, even 92 and so here's the support here about 9325 that's the break of 94 so we are seeing this continuing to uh, work its way downward and what did this do this sparked some significant rallies in commodity prices the the rising US dollar has been one of the factors that's weighed on commodity prices for quite some time we're now seeing commodities start to turn around and I'll show a few examples here I'm going to start with although it also really trades as a currency I'm going to start with gold as the uh, the one market that really does trade significantly against the U.S. dollar. Um, 
back and forth. So we had a, a downswing here. Looked like we had a head and shoulders base. This is 1180 support, which pretty much held through this period. We've now broken the net line of 1220, signaling a potential move upward here. This here was a $40 range, measures you up towards 1260 in and around these uh, previous highs and lows through here. We're also seeing the uh, RSI breaking out of a short term downtrend and starting to move up as well, suggesting that upward momentum for gold is starting to accelerate. But the gains were not just limited to gold, they were right across precious metals. I'll bring up the uh, the platinum chart here as a uh, as an example and I'm going to actually draw in this uh, trend line when I, in a second here. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to take a a trend line here because look at this we've been in a huge downtrend for platinum for a long time and look at that what's it done this week it started to break out so that is pretty significant for platinum here it's broken out and retested the breakout point of support twice and it's still climbing so platinum looking pretty strong here it's base building in a thousand ninety to eleven ninety four range this first resistance up in here is about eleven eighty so there is still some upside for platinum if it takes out that then there's this one and then this next resistance up around twelve fifteen we're seeing here the RSI is showing upward momentum starting to accelerate. So platinum is uh, is another market starting to pick up. And I'll also show the uh, the chart for silver, which uh, which also has been showing some uh, some really good strength as well. And look, we got a, a significant clients have been going long on silver. If we pull up the, uh, I'll just draw in a, a trend line here. This is a really nice uh, ascending triangle base forming in silver the first resistance was 17 it's cleared that it's now testing next one around 1771 if it clears that next is this previous high dating back to january near 1840 uh, overall nice positive uptrend in the rsi shows momentum turning uh, increasingly upward as well so silver is another one looking like it's bottoming out here and this isn't just contained to precious metals i'm also going to show the the chart for wheat here and uh, and just as we saw for platinum, we'd had a big downtrend in wheat. It's starting to break out as well. It broke out of this trend uh, downtrend line here and five dollars. And we saw the RSI blast up above 50 as well to confirm the upturn. It's now consolidating this around 511. Next resistance Fibonacci level around 524, and these previous highs here in and around 550. So we're seeing a uh, a nice turnaround for wheat as well. So uh, a broad-based uh, improvement in a number of the uh, markets that trade uh, opposite to the U.S. dollar, particularly in uh, in commodities, are, are starting to show some significant signs of life. The one exception to this is the one that kind of has been leading this recovery, and that's crude oil. And I'll show uh, WTI here to, as an example of what I mean. So we had a, uh, a great run up in WTI while the other commodities have been floundering. We had a cup with handle base, an ascending triangle, blasted out of that. It's kept on going. So low is around 42.10. Added 20 bucks on to the price of uh, crude oil. It's peaking here just around $62. We're, uh, and we're still trying to work things out here. This was an evening star pattern here. We had an up day. We had a gravestone doji where the first breakout over 60 failed and was pounded right back. So the bulls took control and they weren't able to hold it and the bears knocked them right back. And then we had this, uh, in, this day downward as well to complete a bearish um, a bearish candlestick pattern here. Since then, we've seen it struggle with this uh, former trend support line becoming resistance. In the last couple of days, it has become resistance, and we've seen crude oil drift back under 60. What are we seeing on the RSI? Got way overbought on the RSI. Now it's starting to trend back under 50 towards 70, telling us A, a correction getting started, B, momentum shifting from upward to sideways. And, and then looking at the crude oil market, we ask, well, how much higher could it really go? Well, here's why it could struggle. The, the big thing we've seen lately is that, yes, the uh, U.S. inventories have finally started to go down a little bit. We've seen substantial cuts in U.S. production, but the problem is that it was only the U.S., the uh, OPEC, the uh, International Agency, International Energy Agency reported that OPEC, in fact, has been raising production, So, and, and they've raised their production more than the U.S. has cut production. So this supply war is still going on, totally unabated. The Saudi Arabians have been going around, uh, Saudis have been going around telling everybody that, uh, that they've reached their objectives, they've achieved their objectives of basically maintaining their market share and driving down U.S. production. So now, so what's happened so far, we've got this huge supply war, the Saudis are winning, the Americans are losing, and we have to wonder how long 
long the Americans are going to stand for this. If uh, crude oil was to continue to get back up much higher, we could easily see a lot of uh, shut-in U.S. production come right back on stream. That could limit the upside for crude, and uh, and we're starting to see it come back off. So now we had we had seen it here previously was trading in a range between let's call it forty dollars and fifty-five. Maybe now we're into a range of fifty-five to sixty-five or maybe 50 to 65, depending on how it shakes out. So yes, we're in a consolidation at a higher level, but it does look like for crude oil, we could be into a sideways to lower environment for the next little while. And uh, and based on that, we'll uh, we'll take a look also at some uh, currency markets uh, as well. We'll uh, we'll start with the uh, the Canadian dollar here, and uh, and actually I also want to show the ruble, which is uh, looking increasingly uh, interesting as well. So we'll start with some of the oil sensitive currencies. So as uh, as the price of oil went down, these uh, these currencies went down as well, and we're measuring them against the U.S. dollar. So we're going to start with U.S. dollar CAD. So this means when this went up here, the U.S. dollar went up, the Canadian dollar went down. Crude oil crashed, so did the Canadian dollar. Now what are we looking at here? A one, two, three, triple top, and and we've had the breakdown, a pretty substantial one. As crude oil has trended up, U.S. dollar CAD has trended down. However, what are we seeing now? In and around 119.20, one, two, three, triple bottom. Them. We're seeing that the RSI also is suggesting that the uh, the downward momentum is starting to shift to uh, sideways. Some of this downward pressure is easing. So if we see a downward correction in crude, we could see an upward correction in dollar CAD. It's already back above dollar twenty. This first resistance here is about one twenty one, and then these uh, higher highs in here around one twenty one sixty. So we could see a bit of a uh, move up in uh, in U.S. dollar CAD if crude oil does continue to weaken. If we look at the uh, U.S. dollar against the Norwegian krona, we're uh, seeing this is actually a little more interesting because while uh, the Canadian dollar was rebounding, the uh, weakening the uh, Norwegian krona actually continues to strengthen here, where uh, we're seeing that this downtrend is still uh, is still ongoing and accelerating with the RSI still moving downward. So we've uh, broken through 781. This support here is about 773, and this next support here in around 752 and then 744 is the next Fibonacci level. So perhaps is this a descending triangle? Perhaps we could see a little bit more of uh, strengthening in the uh, in the Norwegian krona, which is quite intriguing considering oil looks like it might be uh, it might be topping out for now. We'll see. One I wanted to show also was the uh, the Russian ruble, which is actually at a, a pretty key uh, point here. I dated way back here to the beginning of this uh, of this route of this uh, weakening uh, collapse of the ruble it actually started in the fall of 2013 the ukraine really blew out here in early 2014 a uh, situation with uh, when yanukovych was forced out but these were around when the protests started we can see just rubles just been weakening weakening this was the us dollar strengthening strengthening against then the whole oil price came in took the uh, the ruble down again but look at this in the last while we've actually seen it's been steadily recovering uh, the ruble along with the oil price now what's interesting about that it had gotten oversold the uh, rsi is leveling off and this is starting to level off around 2.50 big round number on top of that that coincides with a 60 two percent retracement of this big rally the 50 to 62 zone is a place where we often see corrections level out and what we've seen here recently leveling out in in here this is 4980 this is 5550 this could be an emerging trading range for the ruble however if the ruble does break down through this and crude oil keeps carrying on next potential support 4785 and this low here is about 4425 so there is still some room for the uh, downward if the ruble can break out, but it may not here, particularly if crude oil also continues to struggle. I'll uh, just take a couple of minutes and show a, uh, a couple of uh, other currencies here. We'll show uh, Aussie dollar and... Or, sorry. Uh, here we'll start with Aussie Kiwi. So we've seen that this got down towards par. There was a double bottom here. It's exploded to the upside, and uh, and now is uh, leveling off here in this Fibonacci range between about 107.50, about 108.50. But uh, really, let's look here also at uh, you Aussie US dollar here. It's been uh, steadily recovering along with commodity prices, maybe leveling off here. But if the uh, if the US dollar continues to weaken, Aussie could continue to strengthen. Uh, similarly, if we come down to the uh, New Zealand dollar, 
uh, same sort of thing. This is base building. The trend is not as strong for the Aussie dollar because people are still thinking that the RBNZ could cut interest rates. Right now it's trading in a 73 to 75.50 trading range. And uh, I'm just going to wrap up with a, a couple of more here. I'll show the yen, the euro, and the pound. So let's start with uh, dollar yen. Is, uh, is still below 120. It's still uh, kind of forming a big descending triangle here. Uh, quietly, the uh, the yen is showing a bit of improvement against the U.S. dollar, but not as much as some of the other currencies. We'll uh, look at sterling here, and uh, this exploded out of the up out of the election. I was I talked about the lack of a response to the the royal birth and the uh, election results in the FTSE. In the sterling, it's been very strong where we saw, look at this, a positive divergence and a nice base here, blasted through 150, retested as well above it as uh, as new support carrying right on here. It's now trading up in this 155.80 to 158.90 between the range between these two uh, Fibonacci levels. Again, US dollar continues to weaken. This could uh, strengthen as well. And I'll wrap up here with Euro dollar. And uh, we're seeing the same sort of thing. We're now into a Fibonacci range between about... Uh, this is 113, or about 113 even. This is about just been a tad above 115, and this one here is in and around 111.40. So we're seeing here that it's still working its way higher, but the uh, the euro dollar could uh, could stabilize here. In terms of news in the coming week, it's it's fairly quiet overall. We're past the peak of earnings season. However, we do get a number of reports from U.S. retailers. On Tuesday, we have Walmart and Home Depot. On Wednesday, there's uh, Target, Staples, and a number of others. We uh, also the uh, on the economic news side, it's pretty slow for the most part. Wednesday is a big day though. Uh, Wednesday to Thursday, we get Bank of England minutes, we get minutes from the last Fed meeting, and we also get flash PMI reports for. China. China, Japan, Germany, France, and the United States. So that the Wednesday to Thursday is a, is a potentially more active time for uh, for markets in terms of economic news. But uh, overall, through the week, as as we can see, we've seen a uh, a trend change in the U.S. dollar that seems to be asserting itself. U.S. indices decide, trying to decide what to do around new all-time highs, and oil trying to figure out if it wants to continue with the commodity rebound or if it's done. So there's still a lot of uh, moving pieces and a lot of potential for trading action in the coming week.